Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to have a look at the Albinoric village from a level design and world design perspective. The Albinoric village itself isn't really that big and complex and it really doesn't have that many enemies inside. So the main focus, I guess, will be on the world design itself. But I'm currently not standing in the Albinoric village. I'm standing in front of the entrance. Because if we have a look at the map, we can see there is this big area over here. And this is a little bit um, unlucky, I guess. Um, and maybe there should be a mechanic to change elevation on the map itself because when you have a look at this it looks quite big right it, it looks like quite the massive area but most of this is on top on on top of the plateau over here but i want to have a look at this thing that is inside the cave itself and um, the map itself isn't really good at showing um, stuff in elevation like for example this cathedral is on top these ruins are on top this deep well is on top and these ruins are also on top but this over here the village of the Albanorix is in a cave right underneath this area but the map isn't really conveying that uh, it, it looks like it's all in the same, um, well, on the same spot, basically. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think, well, I, th I, I think also this is one of the only parts where it matters, but it's uh, it still would be nice to see some kind of elevation difference in there to differentiate these two areas uh, better from each other but this is just a minor detail so uh, let's enter the cave now and we can only uh, already observe something here because if we have a look at the map again we can see leonia is a lake or when well, it's called leonia of the lakes right so um, all of this in the middle is uh, occupied by water uh, not very deep water but uh, there is no spot where you're just drowning when you go there. It's like not even near deep. So, but here, <clears throat> excuse me again. Uh, this might happen uh, quite a few times now that I have to cough. Um, and what we can see here is this bank of uh, ground, and then there is poison swamp over here. Uh, there's quite the contrast. And it already looks like, if we have a look at the uh, nature around, here we have green trees, grass. And if we have a look at the swamp, swamp area, we can already see the trees bear no leaves. They look quite dead. Everywhere are these uh, dead, drift, uh, dead driftwood branches um, and just dead nature all in all. So the overall theme of the landscape is shifting. We also have big crabs here um, feasting on something, possibly eating the poison swamp, I guess. And this is one enemy type, uh, the crabs. And I don't think there is really much to see down here and it's getting a bit shadowy uh, not shadowy uh, foggy that's what i mean a little bit foggy here um, but this looks really not that inviting right you have the dead trees now there is this blue fog and you can see only uh, the silhouettes of well, gallows with hanging people and uh, people hung from the tree over there. 
and there are just a few torches, just a little bit of light left in this village. And, well, if we approach now, well, there are more crabs hidden in the mud, there is a lot of death surrounding this area. And with a lot of death, I mean really a lot of death. Um, just piles of dead humans. Uh, they even look a little bit charred, which is a nice detail. So they got burned and mass murder is taking place, even hung them up. And if we have a look at the at the corpses on the ground, let me get off torrent. <clears throat> if we have a look at the garbs, this confirms my theory. Uh, it's not really a theory. It was just a theory of mine because I was not really um, certain if the people that we see wearing the commoner garbs here with this um, weird necklace that looks like a shackle as well. To me it really looks like like one of these um, medieval handcuffs with these two holes inside. Well, there are three holes, but it really looks like it could open up and then it's like just like one of these wooden handcuffs. But maybe it's a weird thing to hang around your neck, to be fair. Um, but these people, uh, you might have noticed that in many videos where I saw people wearing this scarf. I wasn't really sure if these were Arbenorics, right? But I think this confirms my personal theory to that. They are indeed Arbenorics, so Arbenorics are most of the time as well used as servants. And if we have a look at these hung corpses, hung up corpses, let me equip this here. We can see the legs are fading, and this is ultimately the fate of all of these Albinorics. At some point, they will just lose their legs. Um, and by that, they're literally just fading into non-existence. It's some sort of um, weird magical stuff happening, because as you can see, they're getting translucent and they're not just rotting away. They, this is clearly not rotting away. This is they're getting translucent and weaker, and at some point they're just gone, which is a strange fate indeed, a very strange fate, and I think unique to this game, right? And there are a lot of dead corpses, a lot. And yes, these are the Albinorix, elongated limbs and an elongated neck. These are wearing different garbs, but if you have a look at the legs... No, oh, uh, well, we have some other Albinorix up there, but yeah, you can see the legs, they're somewhat translucent, they're turning to nothing, and they also look seeming very old that's what i mean they they're getting older so with the age they're not even aging themselves but the, the legs are just disintegrating into nothingness and usually here we will find um what's her name it's even on the map what's her name uh, nefelilu right mourning these people and she actually has compassion to these people and well I'm not going through her quest line but I want to have a look at the visual storytelling here so of course some sort of atrocity happened here right so mass murder and so on and there are just a few survivors left uh, and a lava tier yeah But keep in mind how many um, how many buildings there are, because they have a few shacks here. It's, he 
He's whispering. I can't really hear it. Something with stars, I guess. I think it's the same uh, same whispering as the Albinorix that we encountered in another video in the uh, Carrion Manor. Carrier Manor, excuse me. And here we have a hint of what we have to do in this village. I mean, currently there's not that much to do. You can kill some Albinorix trying to defend themselves because they think you are uh, one of these raiders. And if we have a look at this dialogue of this ghost, this village is done for. Please, even if, it, if it's just you, old Albus, hide well and still your breath. So we need to find this Albus person. In this shack, we have our only set of grace that we can activate. And from here on out, we have two paths to go. One path, which is a dead end, is over this hanging bridge over here. And let's just go there. There's not really that much uh, different difference to see. We have one of these uh, mages. He will cast uh, magic at you. Uh, quite weak magic, I can imagine. <clears throat> Here's just another tree with hanging bodies there. But here's also an item to find that is quite interesting, which is the Crystal Sword. Let's have a look at the Crystal Sword. Maybe there is some interesting lore behind it. Sword fresh fashioned from pure crystal, a deed, uh, a deed impossible for a human. And reefed with powerful magic, its attack scales with intelligence. The indestructible crystallians, no, uh, inscrutable, excuse me, Christ crystallians have but one clear purpose to safeguard their crystals unto the end. One theory uh, persists that they yearn for the return of their creator, will carve. Uh, from them new brethren, okay? Uh, for them, oh man. I'm bad at reading today, but not much lore about the Albinorix, more lore about the Crystallians itself, or themselves. So, we also have to look at the village as a whole, right? The village is in a cave with a poison swamp underneath it. And this makes it, first of all, uh, there are symbolic uh, things you can read into this and it serves a, a practical purpose to fend off invaders. Uh, clearly, the invaders invading this village or who invaded this village uh, didn't care about the poison swamp at all. They just ventured through it. But it also paints a picture like the Albinorix are in a cave, so they are not under the night sky, which is uh, the sky is in Leonia, uh, in the Leonia religion or whatever you want to call it, um, something very important because uh, stars are basically the fates, like the fates of the people, um, of, of mages basically, or the carrier royal family at least. So they are not under the night sky and they can only see the sky when they look out of their cave. On top of that they are living literally um, surrounded by a poisoned swamp which uh, lets it read as they are not really welcome here and they are not. They are like treated as objects. They are not worth anything and that they're just servants, like slaves. And it doesn't matter if you just kill them. Um, I think I can say it now. Uh, the person who ordered the invasion of this uh, village was none other than Sir Gideon Ofnir, the person we can talk to in the round table hold. Like, he ordered his men 
to search for a uh, half of a medallion, which he clearly haven't found yet, but this is the outcome, basically. And Nefeli Lu is usually also under the command of Sir Gideon, but she wasn't part of the invasion. She found out that her quote-unquote father, and Sir Gideon is not her real father, he just took her in because she was an orphan or something like this. Um, when she found out, she went against um, his orders and avenged the village or tried to help, but clearly didn't work, right? And uh, Sir Gideon is casting her out. She's no longer under his protection, um, which is understandable, right? If you order something and one of your soldiers is not uh, helping you in any way, like working against you, you would cast them out. Uh, but this also depicts Sir Gideon as a ruthless, uh, as a ruthless person. Um, if we continue upwards, I don't think. Oh, I think. Isn't this one supposed to um, play a flute? Or was that at another location? Uh, but uh, this is one of the few enemies we encounter here, uh, besides the Albanorix trying to defend their village. Uh, this is a depraved perfumer and arguably or possibly one of Sir Gideon's soldiers. And. Uh, I think you can tell why he's called a depraved perfumer. Look at his sunken in face. They're basically just like perfumers, just they feel like addicts to me, like drug addicts. Um, before I want to talk, oh, before I'm going to talk about Albus, we have to count the houses here. Because this is something that I want to talk about and uh, but first, let's count the houses, right? We have one, two, three, arguably three. Um, there's four, uh, five. And uh, quite a large one, but still five. And then over on the other side, there is six and seven. Maybe somewhere there's an eighth house, but it doesn't really matter. And now have a look at the amount of dead bodies there are here. Even on this pile of corpses, there are way too many corpses for each house. Like, the game tells us all these people were butchered here and also living here, possibly. Why would they be here, right? So... There are definitely not enough houses for every single corpse. Like, we have seven houses, let's say, per house. There are like five or six people living in it. Uh, also, not really believable, but these are basically rejects. No one wants them, right? So, um, let's say just five people per house. Uh, seven. This is way too many corpses, right? Um, but this is something that the game does all the time, and this is the trick. Um, let me explain what I mean by that. So, this is clearly an exaggeration, right? You have like hundreds and hundreds of corpses, dead people, or Arpinorix in this case, but you only have seven houses. Why is that? First of all, this area in and out of itself isn't really that important. It's not supposed to be that big of a level. It's not a really big uh, village, right? We have seven houses, small houses on top of that. But we have so many corpses. And there are few reasons for that, why there are not just, let's say, 30 corpses. First of all, if the corpse or the amount of corpses would be um, realistic, then it would be a 
contrast to the rest of the game. First of all, it's harder to convey mass murder and the dark themes like this with quote-unquote only uh, a handful of corpses, right? You have to put more effort into your scene that you want to paint or you want to create with a uh, few corpses. You have to hand-pick them. Here you have to just put a pile here, put a pile there, and that gets the message across, right? Hang a few bunnies from the trees, something like this. But if you have uh, less resources to work with, like there are only like 30 people living here, then you have to then you have to be much more careful where you place them or else the message is not being uh, conveyed as um, as easy as this one here, right? So you have to work more careful and it's it would be a too big of a contrast to the rest of the game because the whole game is exaggerated. What do I mean by that? For example, uh, I think the easiest example on top of that would be uh, if we have a look at the two at the capital over here, the uh, capital Landell, and if we have a look at Castle Stormvale, both of them have infinitely high walls like really high fantasy walls like no one in real life would have built that right even Landell has a big part of its city missing all of this uh, where now is water on the map was one city right it was the whoops wrong button it was the city underground here that sunk underground and now there's just a moat this wouldn't happen in real life right so it's an and it's an exaggeration of the whole idea. It's high fantasy. And so is Castle Stormvale. It's built on a cliff with very high walls and it has this big, uh, big yeah, deep chasm inside with the part of, um, with the head there, the, the tentacle head, the, the Prince of Death's head thingy going on there. So. It needs this exaggeration, and this game, this whole game is built off of the exaggeration of certain aspects. And if all of a sudden we have this small little village here where it's all of a sudden realistic, then that would be a too big of a contrast, like that wouldn't really, really fit in the game. If it's just this small area, what is so special about this small area? It's just telling a story. Is this story all of a sudden more important or less important? How do you read this, right? So they have to exaggerate here as well. And it's definitely not a coincidence. Like It's not like they didn't think about it. Of course, they, or at least I hope so, I, they know. Like we have seven buildings here and we have like 300 corpses here lying around. Of course, if you think about it, they can't all live here. It's impossible. Like. There's not even a tent here indicating that it was sleeping outside of the houses, right? So there needs to be some sort of um, exaggeration going on here. And if it would be something in between, like um, seven houses could possibly house like 30 people or 40 people, something like this, then, and they are like uh, maybe 80 bodies, something like this, right? Then it would be also unbelievable or not really believable because it's like did they just miss it and you would think did they, did they just miss it like there are clearly not enough houses here for the people living in here so so you need to exaggerate it to get so that it's not an, uh, like an accident right so that it doesn't look like an accident that the designers who built this level didn't think just like Oh yeah, put up some corpses here, and they didn't even think about the living space, right? And uh, you could also say this game is a—it's just telling a story, and it, every story has its exaggerations. No story, in and out of itself, is really a like one hundred percent real. Like if you're telling a story, and this game is telling a story. You are exaggerating, you are warping things, right? You're not telling the story one to one, like every single detail that you've read 
you are explaining the exact same way. You're not doing that. You're adding your own stuff. Maybe you take some stuff away. Maybe you emphasize on different aspects of the story, right? And this is what the game is doing. It's telling its story and it is working. But if you have a look at it, it's not really all that believable in and out of itself. There are contradictions like, like here, 10 million corpses in a small village like with seven houses. But that's fine. It's, it is working. Of course it's working. Otherwise people would think like, what is, why is this game so shit? It's not realistic at all. Like, it is not realistic, but it's not supposed to be realistic, even from a, uh, even from a, a high fantasy realism type thing. But let's continue. So this wasn't a rant, by the way, if, if you've lost me, this was like, this is good design, to be honest, like, but of course it, from a realism perspective it's not like there are way too many excuse me way too many corpses here and well where could this albus person be why is this thing glowing like and this is something that is um that i personally don't really like why is it glowing right it is like telling the player, oh, here is something interesting. And uh, I'm, I'm not really a fan of that, of, of this type. Here, of course, if you roll against it, or if you hit it, or whatever, it's just... Okay. Well, yeah. There we have Albus. I'm not going to talk about him. Uh, I'm going to talk about him. I'm not going to talk to him right now. But because... No, it's it's not quest time. It's it's level design and, and, and world design time. Of course, this is Albus, the ghost thing he was speaking about. And he is something special. When you talk to him, you can convince him or he will give you one half of the medallion and then uh, some other quest line continues. The the Arbinoric quest line now from um, what's her name? Um, Latena, right? But that's not what I'm here for. And he will die once he gives you the medallion. He is just too old, I guess. And because everything in this game needs to die, I guess, so... And let's get... Oh, let's walk over this bridge over here. Because it's, it's close to the end now. Just one of these bridges where there are a lot of enemies and the crawl is quite creepy, to be honest. The crawl looks really, really creepy of these dudes. But here we have one of these scarabs, then if you've done it correctly and continued the Nefeli Luke quest, then you can summon her here. Why the hell you would... This is something interesting, right? Or not interesting, but something that I'm not really getting. And I'm getting it, but not really. Is the summoning. If... I would have come or played up to this point where Nefelilu is sitting under this bridge on a pile of corpses and I can talk to her. Then I know she's already in this village, right? And this is something that I don't really like, right? Usually she would fight alongside of you, right? She is also trying to clear this village. I would like to have the option not to kill the Albinorix. With, I mean, I have the option, but they are still attacking me. I would like to have some mechanic where when I'm not attacking them, they realize at some point I'm not an enemy and they also let me be. That would be awesome. And I would like to have some sort of mechanic where I can talk to Nefililu and say, come with me instead of just summoning her here. And then we go through 
this level with then only one enemy inside with the perfumer uh, together. That would be something nice. And, and this is something that I don't like. I don't like the idea of having to summon an NPC. It makes sense for players, right? You need to some way of connecting to them and the summoning part without having an open world where everyone is walking around like an MMO or RPG or something, that wouldn't be possible for this game. But so the summoning of real players would make sense. But I don't like the idea of summoning NPCs. I would rather have the NPC standing somewhere, like not their phantom, the NPC themselves. And then I can talk to them and say, hey, follow me. Right, something like this, maybe. Or stay here, I don't need your help. And then uh, the idea of shaping someone's questline, whether or not you wanted their help, or not maybe shaping their questline, but um, having different dialogue there, some some flavor dialogue, right? So thank you for clearing this. Uh, I could have helped you, but I, uh, but but thank you for not letting me fight or something like this, right? Or something, oh, I could have helped you. Why, why were, are you so stubborn? Something like this, right? And they've done this uh, quite a few times uh, already. They've done it with... Um, what's his name? And Demon Souls, Astrava? Was it his name where you could rescue him and then he would patrol an area? Of course... If he died then if he died there then everything would have been over or his questline would have been over but maybe something without something like this with less uh, consequences if they die I mean if I die I respawn if they die they might respawn as well somewhere right maybe not just for this encounter anymore or maybe maybe after you've rested at the side of grace that would have been nice um but I really would like thing uh, like to have it without the summoning itself. I think the summoning should only be a uh, PV or a player interaction online mechanic. That's what I wanted to say. But let's approach this area because here we have the boss. Boss of this area. Which is this omen killer over here. But omen killer aren't really a boss, it's just a normal enemy type. But because this is the first one you encounter, I guess they have a boss bar. And uh, here's some dogs, and this is a throwback to the Dark Souls 1 uh, Capra Demon, that's what, it, it, what it's called. Where you're fighting an enemy with two sword-like weapons, in this case the Omen Cleaver and the Capra Demon with the Demon Cleaver or whatever it's, it's called. And then a few dogs in the in the boss arena as well. Here we have quite a few more dogs, but we also have more space, right? And then we have the Omen Killer, which is arguably like, well, you could say that he's like the boss of this little group. Like he's the leader of the small little group and they are all um, the follower or the soldiers or the hired people from Sir Gideon. And a uh, nice little touch is that they're all burned, these bodies, or they, at least to me they look burned. Uh, and the Omen Killer has the ability to spew fire out of their mask. Like maybe as some sort of incantation or maybe it's a mechanism like or maybe it's a, it's a chemical reaction, like the perfumes or whatever, right? But um, I think I've talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. Let's see, is there, is there more to talk about this area? I think I've talked about the most important things. Uh, exaggeration and quest lines or not quest lines but interactions with NPCs yeah I think that's it so I guess I need to rate this area but mm, I'd rather not I'd, 
I'd, I'd rather not rate things. I think rating things is just... And this is now th something new, right? Uh, usually if I do one of these series here, or one of these videos where I have a look at a specific location, I'm rating this location from a level design and world design perspective. But I think it's... I've, anyways, I've forgotten what I've rated other things, so comparing them to each other is just, it's not healthy, to be honest. Uh, I'd rather give feedback or talk about things that I like and I don't like and maybe could have been improved, but rating things is just more harmful than, than not. That's maybe there to, to, uh, What's, what do I want to say? Uh, maybe it's a rating system. It's just there to convey my frustration with th certain things. But <laughs> um, let's not rate this area. This area is fine, I guess. Um, it's low heavy. It's not the difficult area. Like there are not that many difficult enemies in here. Even the boss fight is a pushover, but it's fine. It, it, it's completely fine. So. Let me know what you think about this area and the topics I've talked about, and that's it from me. Goodbye.